Welcome back. Last module, introduction to Jason using uh, C Sharp. I'm still Christopher Harrison. That's still Benjamin Lin. Now, we've seen an awful lot when it comes to Jason. We've seen the structure of the file. We've seen how to read, how to write. Now we want to put it all together into, um, a, uh, into an example application uh, where we could actually write all this out to a file and kind of you know, start seeing maybe a little bit of how we could potentially use this in the real world. Okay, so this is module four, and uh, I'll be covering how to use a JSON file as an application storage device. So we're going to be building an application that reads data from a JSON file on start. The data is going to be edited through console input, and when you exit, the, the JSON data file will, will be rewritten. And so one thing that's worth highlighting real quickly here is that you did a console app just to do a console app, just so that way all the code was right there. But this could be a web application. This could be a Windows app. You're just doing this as a console mm -hmm. just to be able to more easily show the code. Correct. OK. So let's get to the, the demo. So I am opening up my Visual Studio project. And I'm going to show a quick demo before uh, I get into the details of the application. So okay. here we have the console application. You know, several commands at uh, your whim. So I'm going to show the contents of what's in the application. So what this application is, it's a shopping list. And you can add items to the shopping list, delete them as you choose. And okay. So there's nothing in this list right now because we didn't do anything. And if we look at the, the, the JSON data file that we started with, there's nothing in that as well. That so looks pretty empty to me. That is correct. <laughs> so we can add some things to the item. So let's add some ham, You know, some $50. Add some cheese, twenty dollars, and let's show the contents. So now we have some ham and some cheese. And so let's uh, quit the program. We're done shopping. Getting hungry now. And it says uh, the data that JSON file has been rewritten. And let's uh, oh something happened. Oh, it's been rewritten. Oh, cool. Okay. Uh, so then um, let's if we restart this uh, program and we show the contents. Hey, look, it's still there. So, so it read all that in from the file. Yeah, isn't that amazing? So you can store your application data on a mm -hmm. JSON file. Nice. So okay. uh, let's edit this. So let's um, delete the ham, you know. <laughs> and uh, ham is deleted. So let's uh, quit this. And we should expect the ham to be gone from the JSON file, correct? Uh, correct. So let's look at the JSON file. It's been edited. Now you look at it. Yep. It's only cheese. Perfect. I like it. So um, let's go through the details of this application. OK. So I'm using JSON.NET. I've included it as a NuGet package already. And since this is a shopping list and I have items to add to the shopping list, I've created a class called item. And it's a very, very simple class. It just has a, st a string for a name, a uh, price as an int, mm -hmm. a basic constructor, and it's an I equatable because we're, since we're dealing with lists and we want to be able to easily add and delete items off the list, yep. it's, uh, if we make it an I equatable, it's easy to delete things. Right. And this equals function says that two of these class items are equal if they have the same name. OK. So in my actual main function, so as we saw in earlier modules, I am reading from my data.json file, and I'm storing that into a string. I am deserializing that string into a list. So earlier we deserialized a person, and now we're, de we're specifying the type as a list of items, and we're deserializing it into an item list called my list. Oh, so the deserialize could actually deserialize to anything. So it doesn't have to just be an individual object. It could actually be a list. Correct. OK, cool. And here we, uh, we have to check if. Um, the file is empty. And if, if the file is empty, we need to create a new list because the list does not exist yet. Right. And we can't add items to a non-existing list. So, and what, uh, for this uh, section of the code, it's just a switch statement that takes a keyboard input mm -hmm. and does something to it. So if we press A, it's going to you know, do a read line for you know, the name of the item. Then it's going to ask for its price, and then it's going to simply add that, create a new item and add that to the list. So just adding it to the list, just like a normal list, so there's mm -hmm. nothing that's particular to JSON. Yeah, nothing right JSON. It's just adding to a list. OK. And delete, similar. We're specifying the name of it. We're removing it from the list. And uh, Q for quitting the program. 
and S just for showing the contents of the list. Okay. So when you press Q and you quit from the program, that is when it exits from the while loop and actually rewrites the JSON data file. And it does that just as before. We uh, serialize our object. This, in this case, it's our list. Serialize that into a string and write that string to a JSON file. Perfect. So well, um, let's see it one more time. Uh, yeah. So let's add, you know, some more. Let's add a car, you know, <laughs> and uh, and let's add, you know, a house. It's an expensive house. Yeah. Let's show the contents yeah. <laughs> right here, and uh, let's quit. So we're done shopping. We spent all our money on a house. So yes. um, it's uh, written the JSON file. So let's exit. Yes to all. We have cheese, car, house, and uh, all inside that JSON file. Yeah. So. Okay. That's all it is to, the, to that application. Cool. I like it. So, so what we wound up seeing through the course of the course is we introduced JSON, talked a little bit about what JSON is. We then dug a little deeper into the actual structure, the format of a JSON file, what makes all of that, uh, that work. We then took a look at how we can both uh, read and write uh, JSON strings from an object, so how to uh, both uh, deserialize and serialize, and then close it off with a, an example of how you could actually use JSON to store some application data and use that as a backing store for uh, for an app that you've created. Mm -hmm. All right, beautiful. I love it. Well, Benjamin, thank you again for uh, coming out and uh, and doing this. And uh, I guess that puts a, a wrap on the course. So thanks a lot for tuning in. Thank you.